So still don't have glasses. These are actually kind of falling apart too. I really need to retape them. Uh, I showed you guys, I think, in the first video that I just I broke my glasses so much that I just popped out the lenses and taped them to a pair of sunglasses that uh, are increasingly cheap. Or I'm aware of their cheapness every day that goes by because like wearing a hole on my nose. And anyway, I'm a mess, which I guess maybe is a good metaphor for this game. <laughs> That I'm about to show you. I've got some green tea today. Hopefully that'll relax me. Oh, look at that. It's getting com almost completely canceled out in the, the green screen filter. Um, <laughs> it's actually it's just barely green, so a little impressive. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm here. I'm wearing another Go Congress shirt today. I just sort of made that theme. I'm just wearing all my Go shirts right now. This is actually from the very first Go Congress I ever attended. This is 2009 in Washington, D.C., and it was amazing. Like, my first Go Congress was awesome. If you ever have a chance to go, it's ever by you, or you ever have the time off and the resources to go and just enjoy a week-plus-long uh, tournament of Go and, and all the Go associated Go events, man, get yourself to the Go Congress. And if you're in Europe watching this, there's the European Go Congress that also changes cities every year in Europe, and it's usually two weeks long over there. And so anyway, this year I was so happy that the Go Congress was back on... Uh, I should say back offline. That's a weird thing to say. Um, it's been online during the pandemic, and this is the first time it happened in person. Uh, in these videos, I'm going over my my U.S. Open games. These are serious tournament games, often three-hour games or more. And uh, today, I want to show you my third game. I'm showing them a little bit out of order, but just coincidentally, this is the third game I'm showing you, and it's the third game that uh, took place in the U.S. Open. It's against a, a Chinese player from, I think, New York. At least that's where she's living now. Um, Qian Yangji. And she goes by Yang. Um, and, and, you know, very strong player. Uh, kind of hard-nosed, as you're going to see from this game. And, oh, man, this was a stressful game. Like, like I don't know if you know this, but when I'm, when I'm in, like, an intense, especially, like, brain intense brain-burning situation, I just start, like, nervous sweating. And during this game, oh my god, like, like just, just my body was not, was not in a state of relaxation. <laughs> it was just nervous sweat the whole time. And you can kind of see a little bit of that from the graph, just these swings and, and momentum changes that happen throughout the game. Uh, just really added to that. <laughs> so, also, I think it's uh, a fun fact, I think I sweat more when I'm winning. <laughs> Which is kind of an interesting fun fact. Anyway, I want to show you this game today because, oh man, these swings, uh, uh, like, I, is it, uh, 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 I don't even have words. I don't even have words. They're just, they're just these grinding, like, steamroller swings of momentum. They're not like, like, oh, someone made this, this incredible blunder and loses 50 points. No, these are, these are like real momentum shifts. So anyway. We'll go through it. We're using AI Sensei. My friends at AI Sensei, we got a we got a, a pro uh, level review here on it. Um, and so, if you if you are wanting an online AI to help you out analyze your games, do check out AI Sensei. They're doing great work. Um, in this game, I am black, and uh, as I mentioned before in my Chris Kirshner video, the last video, um, I'm playing a lot of cross games these days as black. This is my favorite opening. Um, so I do that again here. And uh, the beginning... Oh, I also want to take off all these really annoying little points. This is this is all superfluous. And so we're playing... Uh, you know, we're, we're, things are going according to plan. <laughs> White plays this low pincer. Uh, instead of responding, I decide to approach the lower right. This is mostly because of some of the ladder variations that can come out of this. Uh, is what I was looking at. Or at least wanting. So I'm going to take uh, take some initiative down there, and then Tanuki back to the upper left. And that, that's the reason for playing this down here, um, which uh, the AI totally agrees with. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Okay. Um, white cuts, indeed, which is the other AI'd uh, preferred uh, method. And Ying, uh, as promised, is proving to be tough-nosed already. All right, notice she is not just... just 
crawling and making third line territory. She's like, no, we fight. <laughs> now we fight. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> That's why I play this, this little laddery kind of, kind of preparatory sequence first. And so we're already in this fight. Um, these are, these are all basically forced moves. I think, let's see, does the AI think, I think white has a choice here, but it's actually maybe not because it's really bad shape. Let me just check that out. It's a choice, yeah. Oh, there or there, yeah. It says B is B is plus minus zero, so B and A are even. Um, but C is also possible, which is interesting. Okay. Uh, duh, 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 duh. Okay. So we're playing basically. This is, every move is forced here. How many is that in a row? Do we do we nail down? That's that's got to be a record, right? One. Oh, I guess. Oh, it goes back to here. One, two. Wait, hold on. <laughs> One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Play thirteen AI moves in a row. Good for us. Hey, that's a thumbs up. All right. Uh, Ying takes this. She covers there. Um, we play out. This isn't. I don't. I wouldn't call this Joseki at all. Um, but we play out this corner to a Seki, and I make a couple small mistakes. One huge one you're going to see coming up, and that is uh soon here <laughs> i end i end it with 35 i actually don't need to play this yet i should tanuki as you can see and actually before i tanuki i should take advantage of this aji and whoa hey what, what's going on game what 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 okay i don't know what i did that was what <laughs> what is going on all right uh, so, yeah, part of what I wanted to show you, or was trying to show you, was I'm actually not sure which way I should cut. Because long-term, this cuts better. But short-term, this cuts better. And, like, I'm, I'm a little bit paralyzed and frozen. So I'm not, I'm not sure which way to, to cut. Either way, I have to take a cut. Because if white fixes without me cutting, it's better It's better Aji for white. Um, the AI says cut this way. So, okay, cut, cut the short-term way, quote-unquote. And I should follow up this way. That also makes sure this is Sente later too. Um, and the AI just says, Tanuki, take a, probably finish this Joseki is probably the next best thing, which makes sense. Totally should have done that. I had a little misread of the Seki. I thought I could get a favorable co after this move, but it turns out I can't. So that's just a sort of a blatant misread. And unfortunately, it swings the game in White's favor, like pretty, pretty instantly and dramatically. Um, up to here, it looks like. Yeah, black has just a very thin lead. Again, the AI generally this AI generally favors white um, with the size of Comey at the start of the game. Um, you can see I had, I had eked out even an even game or even a slight advantage, and after this move, lose it all, swings back to white. All right, uh, white's going to push there, which totally makes sense. I did not take advantage of that. Woe is me. Uh, extend again. And right now, white, white's sustaining, going to sustain about a four, four or five point lead for a little while here. Um, get a big move approach. You can already see this left hand is starting to look real promising for white, especially since this is a Seki. Um, you know, we can I can show you some sequences that might look like Ko, but really aren't. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, white. <laughs> this is for even white to push one more. Okay. And push again, yeah, like white, like it's just, it's just, there's no, there's no good way um, for black to actually approach here and start this co. It's a thousand year co style shape because um, no one ever wants to start it for a thousand years. It's just not profitable. So huge mistake there. White gets this lead, this momentum, and, and black already feels behind. Um, I play out this other Joseki, and what's funny is in the game, you can see the AI recommending this move, and. Normally, in the days before AI, in this position, when my opponent was threatening a pretty large chunk of solid territory, or at least a Moyo, I would often just intuitively play this. And after AI, I stopped playing it, <laughs> because I just the AI almost never recommended it, except for now. And so I almost played this move, I was like, no, nah, the AI I can't possibly be right. Uh, AI is going to yell at me later for that, so let's just play what I know. No, this was totally the right move. <laughs> uh, white connects... What? We did it again. What are we clicking, people? It's also the AI's like chugging. What? No, no, I didn't. No. All right. AI, you doing okay? You need some help? All right, it's okay. All right, play there. 
connect. Oh wow, it wants to turn. Wow. All right, I don't I don't know if I ever, I've always played this move next. Uh, this move is a mistake for white, by the way. Usually, at least in the traditional theory, it says minus one, minus one. Um, usually, this makes too good of shape for black for white to push immediately, which is which is funny because in the Josek, the traditional Josek is black plays there, but it's so it's also a minus for white to play there. It's one of those funny little quirks of the shape. Yeah. So anyway, that's not the game. Let's go back to the game. I pull back. White uh, makes a shape, and I connect, connect. And here, I just play the normal way, but I really should ask more questions. I need to play something slightly more active here. Um, I did think about this move, but I was like, no, I'm still, I still have this cut here, and so maybe I can invade. Foreshadowing. <laughs> We're going to talk about that later. Uh, takes that exchange right away, and then takes the key point in the bottom. Um, AI does not say taking the key point is a good move. It wants to continue up here. Um, reasonably so. There's just, there's just like, like when you have a Seki, the walls outside the Seki become extra valuable, right? Like, like all these black stones and all these white stones have this like extra bonus value attached to them because if any of them die, the Seki unsekis. So, uh, even though like this looks like <clears throat> a totally great move and uh, you, you know, is 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 the is a good way to to both attack the three stones, keep potentially building the middle and the left, separate black. Like, like this looks like a totally reasonable move. I think just because of that sort of bonus value, the AI is extra focused on this top. Um, I played this move, which the AI really doesn't like. I'm gonna try to force it towards the three stones and run out. Um, yeah, it has no suggestions, apparently. Oh, there we go. Um, yeah, yeah, it's still like cut and push. Cut and push. Like, this is this is important. You gotta do it. You gotta do it. I play here. Again, we, we, all these moves, the eye is just unhappy with at the bottom. And so you can see that um, there's a little jaggedness to the graph, because you see that on, on any AI review when the AI is basically unhappy with where people are playing on the board, right? When <laughs> Very easy thing to see and spot on these AI reviews. Oh, let's drink some tea. Hmm. So, there's a little bit of a fight going on at the bottom. I've got these three stones, Weiss got these two stones. I'm going to get my stones out, which the AI is a, is a dubious believer of. Yeah, still wants to play up there, or if I'm going to play, just play directly. It's pretty similar, though. And uh, I didn't think this move was that good in the game. Uh, Ying's move here at 56, but it's not bad. Again, this is the AI is like, look, this is bonus area. Like, you can do whatever you want at the bottom, but it's actually not like, this is just a little extra tense. You know, this is like, uh, what is it, the 47th parallel in Korea? What's the... <laughs> like, everyone, everyone's on a little bit on high alert over here. <laughs> like, this, this might matter. This might, you know, be some oil reserve people want to fight over. I really shouldn't be joking about these things. <laughs> like these are very real global eco political conflict things. <laughs> um, anyway, I play another shape to actually that does two things. Number one, it helps my group, and number two, it threatens to seal the white corner in and uh, build the right. Um, so now is a great time for white to approach the top right. Um, I play this pincer, which the AI doesn't like. Again, I'm also mindful of the uh, tension up here. Um, but yeah, the AI is just like, no, no, just take cash and then and then deal with it. So lots of lots of inaccuracy moves. Give it, even though you know, I was playing a five on this game, um, we're both just not quite like like this is. We're both super aware of this, but no one is just jumping in the pool. Uh, you know, we're we're aware that it's there, and we're very we're walk we're tiptoeing around it. But we're just not dumping, jumping in the pool quick enough here. Um, I play this Joseki, so this is an interesting thing to look at. Um, when white attaches, you can certainly see the AI agrees with this. Locally, this Joseki that I play is good for black, like n in normal circumstances. But it does have some issues that you'll see. You'll see I'm playing all the blue moves, and uh, over, the, over this little graph, you can see it's going down towards black again. Even in this position, it's still good for black for the most part. 
Um, because here, white kind of has a problem when it comes to fix. Um, white has essentially three choices, connect, connect, or tiger's mouth, and they all have problems. Now, the good news for white is that they're not real problems in this case because white has the ladder. If white didn't have the ladder, then this would get a lot uglier. <laughs> but white does have the ladder, and so it's not too troublesome. Here, though, I should just play the reasonable move and play this to make a medium, small corner and live. I get a little greedy. <laughs> I'm like, no, I can still build the right. It's really hard for, for white to descend because I can, I can then cut and then capture these. Well, it turns out capturing these is actually quite hard. <laughs> um, if we play this, it's still, I think it still works for me, but it's just not that good of a result. White turns here. I have to play here to keep the liberties down. I can play here. White can get out. I can make shape. I can capture these three. But now... Remember that whole, like, extra tense situation? Now white's sort of in command. Yeah, I play up here. White gets a nice group up here. And this group, this group is not safe. <laughs> this group can be very easily annoyed for profit now. Bonus, remember, bonus. So, okay, let's go back. A little bit of an overplay, because white, white is flexible. White has a lot of flexibility, and getting more stuff up here is more valuable than stuff over here. So, again, AI is just like, just settle. Just let white... Um, let white do its thing. Don't... Don't help. <laughs> don't give white... Don't give white a flexible out. Um, so, anyway. My opponent didn't quite call me on this move. Um, she jumped in. And now I should immediately cut and come up. I just come up directly, hoping... I don't know what I was hoping for, just... I just you know this was this was a good move, <laughs> um, but uh, she fixes this way, which was really depressing because now I don't even have a cut. My peeps there are kind of dumb looking. Uh, I mean, if you imagine she fixed this way, well, now I'd have a really great peep right there. Uh, or potentially later on, if I can get some stones around here or here, right? I could eat, I could still cut again. With the tiger's mouth, I really don't have those opportunities. So again, that's why you take the cut. Um, if the tiger's mouth solves all the problems and prevents all the other Aji, take a cut. If the tiger's mouth leaves Aji, then you don't need to cut. <laughs> it's a little confusing. I might consider saying that again, but I'm just gonna... <laughs> the, uh, the basic idea is that if there's a move for your opponent that fixes it and the Aji, then use the Aji. <laughs> I think that's the... as succinctly as I can, as I can say that. All right, so she fixes, and this lets me run out this stone and sort of hammer in this one. So here, uh, this is a really interesting situation. The AI totally can read this out and can see that, oh, no, no, white actually can turn here. C is kind of forcing. White has enough liberties to not get captured compared to the corner, so this works. Um, she doesn't really see that, or at least maybe she does, just doesn't play that. That's what I should say. Um, but here, the AI is super unhappy because... Um, a, white is now looking at playing here and killing off my corner. And so I play here. AI is super unhappy with me. Um, but then she doesn't descend either. She plays very soft. This is one of the times in the game where she played a little bit soft and not as hard-nosed as her normal style. And uh, when she jumps out, I can fix. And it's an e we're back to an even game. Whew. This is very tiring up to this point in the game. <laughs> Um, and, and from my perspective, this doesn't feel like an even game. Like, even though the AI says this is an even game at this point, on the board, during the play of this game... Oh, let me drink some tea before I get some of the feels. I felt, I felt behind. I have very limited resources. Um, when white threatens to connect over here or make shape, it's very difficult for me to attack this. still possible, but it's getting stronger. I don't have much over here. I have some, but not a lot down here. I've got a chunk down here, but also I still have a floating group. And granted, it's not like white has much either, but white also gets Comey. And so if I just look at this group and this group and kind of cancel them out, if I look at this group and this group and kind of cancel them out, I have a corner that can I'm gonna kind of cancel out by Comey. I know the corner is a little bit bigger than Comey, but let's just say for our purposes, um, you know, that's about, that's canceled out. And so I have this thing, whatever this is worth, which the answer is not much, like maximum 12 points, <laughs> maybe, like maximum 12 points here in exchange for whatever white can build on the left. And man, does it sure feel like white can build something a lot more than 12 points quickly and easily. So the AI is like, no, it's cool. 
It's totally cool. Um, it didn't feel that way. However, you can see that, again, I talked about this game in terms of momentum shifts. Uh, really, up through here, um, by playing by playing a Joseki that I knew was good for me, even though I, even though we both sort of blundered it at the end, you can see that it does start to shift this momentum. And over really the next, let's see, 50 moves, right? You can see this momentum just picks up more and more for black. So even though we play this out and I don't feel great and we both blunder, we both make mistakes, basically all of black's groups are safe enough. And so, you know, I, I get to keep some momentum. <laughs> Uh, I do play this move. Wait, was, uh, the AI says I should play here and cut off this stone. Perhaps it's better. Very similar. Not quite. Doesn't quite fight for every last point. Again, make a few points here. Um, and and the the real reason actually during the game why I felt like oh I'm I'm losing here is because it's white sente. Like if I have to come back and play this move, which I don't absolutely have to, but man, is it big? I guess AI says yes. You have to play something here, but. Um, it's white sente. Like, like if white has sente and is building a moyo, that means white's going to get more momentum, right? Indeed, the next couple moves do go well for white, well enough to keep an even game. Um, but then here, um, white decides to fix this cut very directly, and I start to get a little more momentum because this moves very slow. The white white played the stone over here and gave me a bunch of strength. And white still is kind of an attackable group. And so if white, if white is biding her time, well, now I have an opportunity. I've got a little something to exploit down here, and I've got something to annoy over here. So let me find some moves in between them and play this move. Is that what I played? That is what I played, I hope, right? Oh, no, I played this move. Similar. Very similar. Come on. There we go. White takes that point. I play this move, which the A is like, no, it's an overplay, but White responded as well. And so I, I gained a little bit extra. So I've got these two extra stones on the outside against this stone and against these three stones. And so I'm like, okay, all right. I got, I have some momentum. I have, I have things to, to force my opponent to do. And that, like I said in my last video, is one of the best feelings in Go. Like, if I have that momentum, if I can, if I can keep pushing you and just get something very naturally. Ah, oh, such a good feeling. And that's how I felt in this game. So even though I didn't feel like I was winning, I felt like I had some momentum. And that was really important because you can see I ride that momentum for the next 50, you know, 40 moves. <laughs> I'm going to annoy this group. Again, yeah, yeah, he's fine with either of these, I guess. Yeah, I really wants that one. And I really want that one too, because that's, that's a huge move. <laughs> uh, and actually this is, in, in retrospect, yeah, very clearly the move I should play. These two groups really still can't link up easily at all, if ever. So this is just a little bit too preparatory. This is my me still having my mind like, oh yeah, and I'm going to have to invade this or reduce this later on. So it's me trying to keep some sort of balance in mind while annoying these two things. White jumps out. Again, not the best, but it's in the right direction. Um, I play a little bit too close. I should just play a little bit, little bit uh, softer, <laughs> closer to my own group rather than White's group. Just again, keep these, these, both these groups want to run and touch. Just prevent them from touching. That's all I have to do. This is trying a little bit too hard. This is exposing me a little bit too much, a little bit too much thinness. But I do get to cap these two stones, which is great. White makes these exchanges and clamps here. And this move in the game, I was totally off my radar. I didn't think of this clamp. Um, and the Hey High says it's a six point loss. I I didn't see it. Like in the game, like this felt like a totally legit surprise, awesome move. Um, to let's let's read out the AI variation a little bit. Is to play there. Is to cut, cut, come back, and uh, you can see this group is actually struggling quite a bit. If White comes back, we can kind of seal. White now has to mi be mindful of this group. White gets out. We can just fix. If White cuts, that's fine. We can still bring this stone out. And, actually that's not fine, because we, we uh, have a little push-cut problem here, but we'll come back to that. But in, the, in compensation, we are going to attack this stick group here, which feels quite nice. AI, AI died. 
Mm-hmm. Drink tea time. Yep. Okay. Uh, uh, we have this move, which is <laughs> wow. The way to defend against this is empty triangle. Cool. Yeah. Ba basically, we're just playing these two groups off each other. We need a little shape over here. We for we force over here. We need a little shape over here. We force over here. We just sort of just keep bouncing back and forth between them until our bottom group is totally safe or we cut something off. Um, which... Like, it's like why is this busy on both sides? Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. Uh, I didn't read all that out. Instead, I was just like, I just want to keep them separated. And this was the, keep, the simplest way to keep them separated. <laughs> Push, block, connect. Um, at this point, now this is this is a huge. This is just check out this momentum where this is going because uh, things are looking so great for black because this is going to go to a huge co. <laughs> and not that I want a huge co, but hey, you know, take the best deal. White comes this way. We make a co shape. Yeah, white should definitely take this Atari first, even though it injures this a little bit. White just starts the co. I make this double Atari. Which, which actually, I guess, officially starts the co. And uh, there's actually not a lot of co-threats on the board. There are, like, this. these types of moves are, are co-threats, but white has a lot of resources against them, so they're kind of a bit of a... Of a uh, I guess that's a co-threat, maybe. This is a hard one to play out, though. Oh, my God. Like, this, these moves in space to attack... The one I'm taking is this one, and in retrospect, it looks like I should have taken this one. <laughs> but none, regardless, I play there. White doesn't respond. White decides, or she decides, she's going to fill the co for a ten-point loss. And boom, look at that momentum swing. It is all black because now, remember how this was bonus? <laughs> well, I just turned that seki into a black kill. I get a huge corner, potentially killing these four as well depending on how white responds. Um, white tanukis. White's like, no, no, we're going to kill this, as white should. And now these stones are super sad. Now here's the problem. At this point, I kind of think they're dead. <laughs> like, there's a lot of Aji, but I can't quite find two eyes. I can make one eye really easily. The AI is pretty convinced that I can make a, make two eyes with this move. And I read out a bunch of variations, and it seem, seems like, oh, yeah, it does It does just barely work, but it is it is hard reading and it is not obvious to read out this move to a successful two-eyed group at the end. Uh, you got to find this clamp, and then there's this other co-shape while we're at it. <laughs> but nonetheless, this is the, the, the AI is doing all this and does it very well. I don't. And so you can see these stones are pretty unhappy. But as far as the AI is concerned, like black is still winning. Like If we can eventually just get something here. Um, black is still winning. We don't we don't have to be in shambles yet. Um, I think they're dead, but I have a lot of Aji. And after this kill, essentially, uh, I'm like, I can invade the left. There's some weaknesses here. Um, I can split. I even got this little friendly stone over here now to run out to. Um, maybe I can play a few extra forcing moves against this group at some point. Find something. And I kind of go all out. We go all out for the left. And unfortunately, this choice uh, really results in... Um, yeah, you can just see the AI is like, Happy stones are going to live! They can find a way! Because uh, white's tanukiing. I go all out for this left. And that choice just swings the momentum back to Yang. Uh, and I th like I kind of read it out as working. Like like I made a couple mistakes in my reading, but these are long sequences. I'm trying to read out, especially around here, these push cut fight sequences. Um, that uh, I miss. There's one move I missed that I shouldn't that I shouldn't have, and I'll show you that one. Um, there's this cut, but it's complicated. Like these are complicated fight sequences. I'm trying to get out this stick group. So I can attack this stick and this group simultaneously. Liberties are really important. Ying takes her free stuff right now and gets her stones out. And the move, the move, the real move that I read that I thought worked much better than it did is not this one, it's the next one for me, 
why it extends again is this 131. I thought this move was brilliant. I thought this one worked and made all my dreams come true. It does not. Like, like there's a point after I played this move, I was like, I won this game. Like, I just won this game. Uh, it's so good. <laughs> it's not so good because white has A. <laughs> so, <laughs> you can see this momentum shift happen once again because I missed I missed the very simple Tetsuji throw and move. Um, and if you're not seeing, like, if like maybe you don't see why A is so good, it's a liberty problem. <laughs> like through and through. Oh God! And maybe you don't understand why my move, why I thought my move was so good. Well, I'm threatening a few things. Number one, you can see the stick here. It really has nowhere to go. It's going to get cut off. Um, and if White tries, like like if White just runs us out immediately, that's fine. Um, but uh, I'm going to run out too, and then I'm happy. If White tries to connect underneath, that might be possible. But I also can. I have this stone to connect, and potentially push through and cut and fight. Um, so I'm getting more liberties this way. Now, granted, there is an Atari here, um, which I can respond, which I can actually just respond to with A. White will take. I'll get my group out. White will end up like like. There's a compromise variation here that, that I'm not worried about, where I give up this stone and this stone or any other stones I put down here. But White ends up with this very small territory. And in the meantime, I end up, I still have white cut over here, and I'm out. So I'm also happy with that, or happy enough with that. Um, I already got my large compensation. I still have to be able to figure out what to do with this group, but also okay. Um, but here, and, and so, so here, yep, like, actually, yeah, sorry, I, didn't, I don't play this one, I play this one, this empty triangle move, um, which again keeps the group separated, threatens to connect up to this stone. I'm out. I think. I'm not. I'm not out. Um, but I thought this was just suffering for white. But then white plays here. <laughs> and this is the part of the game where I go balls out. Like, look, it's a one-point game, according to the AI, if I can threaten this group and then live down here. Like, it is still an even game. But I am committed, right? I have no no definitive knowledge that I can make this bottom right live. And so I'm like, huh, okay. I should guess I should have seen this move. Um, white plays this and then net. And you can see now all of a sudden, these two stones, the, the stones that are trying to poke out, only have two liberties. And that's a big deal. Or sorry, two liberties after I push. <laughs> Actually, technically they have three liberties right now, but none of this gets out unless they push and cut. <laughs> So there's my push, there's my cut, and you can just see, look, there's just no liberties here. Ying takes this, which is pretty reasonable. The AI is like, what are you doing? Here's another point loss. You should be down here doing stuff, making stuff live. Um, I am praying that I can find a way to capture this stone. I cannot. There is no way. There is no way out. There is only the darkness. I think she played there in the game, but... Um, I guess this isn't, this isn't the game variation. That's what I should have done. Where's the game variation? Oh yeah, I played uh, I played this move first. We're just forcing against these three. Hello. Okay, yeah. She just makes shape, and yeah, that's how she plays there. And there's just there's just no way to capture this. I get more liberties, but it doesn't matter. I have this free Atari to try to really surround. It doesn't work. It just, these, these three white stones can always either connect to here or get enough liberties. Or ca yeah, capture these two, capture this one, or get enough liberties. Um, there's just no way to do it. So, I try. <laughs> it doesn't matter. This is just the game. Yeah, there's just, there's just no way to stop it. I find another cut. I play some other like like tricky moves, but she handles it all just fine. And you can see that the momentum of this game just swings wildly back in her favor. Um, basically, I don't, I don't, I don't know if the, the term tilting is correct um, to use in this case, but certainly this little throw-in that I just missed that shorted my liberties was a big deal. Uh, yep. So this was this was my first loss the U.S. Open. I was two and one after my third round. Um, I don't, I don't, I didn't actually look up and see how Ying did with the rest of her games, but, uh, I certainly wish her a lot of luck and, uh, hopefully we'll play again soon. Um, yeah, 
this is uh I don't know. This 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 was the first game that I felt like got away from me at multiple parts. <laughs> Um, and even still, right, even, even, even at this point, if I just gave that up and came back here, right, this is still an even game. It's just this little, this little tilted attempt to, to find something, and when there is nothing, that really just shifted the momentum, or, or finished the swing of that momentum. Um, which is one of the funny things about any game, but Go especially, like, like if you're winning and you lose a little bit, it feels like you're losing, <laughs> until all of a sudden you play desperately. <laughs> which can compound your losses if your opponent has a steady hand. Uh, and so, yeah, this, this was just a sad, sad shift of momentum. Uh, very, you know, again, like all these games, they're slow games. They, they burn a lot of energy just sitting at the table and thinking you'd be amazed at how tired uh, you can feel when you're just focused for three hours straight playing a, playing a serious game of Go. And... Uh, you know, that being said, I didn't, I didn't really let that, that feeling overcome me and uh, was able to go on the next round feeling, feeling okay. <laughs> you know, maybe not quite as confident, but still feeling okay. So anyway, uh, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this little review and uh, this witnessing of the momentum shifts in one of my own recent tournament games. Uh, come back for more. Happy going. <laughs>